So a very good morning to all of you. I'm Sunita Verma, Senior Director and Group Coordinator of R&D Electronics and IT Group at Ministry of Electronics and IT. At the outset, I welcome you all from the ministry um, for this uh, endeavor, which is which we have been trying to introduce and make available the new offerings and state-of-the-art technology practices to the community of students, researchers, and budding entrepreneurs. Today, in one such effort, we would like to introduce you to the offerings of eFabulous, which is stitched around the Skywater Foundry. I trust that many of you have either made use of their platform or have heard about their open source chip design initiative, which uh, has reached masses in recent uh, past. Meti has announced the Chip to Startup program and design linked incentive scheme to strengthen the chip design expert expertise in the country. And wherein the design flows from prominent vendors, as well as design fabrication support, which are proprietary in nature, are being offered. So, uh, however, today with this webinar, uh, Mohammad Qasim and Jeff T. Corpo with Touch up, we'll touch upon the open source chip design and fabrication flow from eFabless, which also supports contemporary proprietary flows. During the last couple of months, we have been working very closely with them to evolve the offerings of eFabless for Indian design community. And we invite your suggestions in this webinar, the feedbacks, and your expectations too from this offerings, which will be, I think they'll be um, talking about it. And this will help us to conceive a long-term roadmap uh, with them. And please do not hesitate to also provide your suggestions through email by writing to us on email ID support.c2s at meti.gov.in on preparing a collaborative roadmap with eFabless based on today's seminar. We also look forward to a very interactive question and answer session with our speakers after this presentation. And now I welcome Mohammad Qasim and Jeff T. Korpo to walk us quickly through offerings of eFabless. Thank you. And maybe Mohammed, I guess while we're, uh, as you're getting a set up and ready, uh, let me go put my audio video back on. Just wanted to let everyone know how we're handling questions. So we have, um, we're using, we're handling questions uh, through this webinar, through the Q&A facility in Zoom. Uh, you can find a button at the bottom of your Zoom screen, it says Q&A, uh, where you can post your questions there. We are gonna be collecting those and responding to those throughout the webinar um, during the presentation. And we'll also be answering some of those questions live during at the end of the, the webinar session. All right, great, thanks. So when you're ready, okay. yeah. So does everybody see the, the first slide? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's coming through. Okay. Okay. Good morning, everyone. And thank you very much for uh, joining the webinar. Uh, we're looking forward to sharing the uh, information about our platform and what we've been doing with the, um, um, in the open source environment with Skywater. So I will just, in the interest of time, I'll just start really quickly. Uh, and uh, jump into it. Uh, my name is Mohammed Qasim, the CTO and co-founder of eFabless. Um, and um, you know, my background just in general is uh, coming from an analog mixed signal design uh, from Texas Instruments. And, uh, and now a member of the team here in eFabless. The, uh, it's not moving. Oh, it was slow, sorry. Okay. So now I wanted to jump and say, why is it actually hard? The chip design is hard. In, uh, it's because limited knowledge or no, limited access to knowledge, limited access to technology and the cost of manufacturing. And these three manifest themselves in different ways. So over the years, the, uh, the process technology uh, had been advancing and that implied in the sense that the cost for development of these technologies and designs have increased exponentially. The number of customers or users or designers that have access to this technology goes down, and hence the number of the designers, potential designers that are um, uh, uh, readily available to be designing uh, is going down. That is actually very difficult and inconsistent with the market needs. 
which uh, because of the, uh, the explosion in the uh, um, edge uh, AI and edge technologies and IoT devices, there is and the need at the same time for specialized or custom compute uh, environments that are uh, uh, sp application specific, then the, there, there will be a need for a large number of customized solutions that are tailored for the application, call it the right size. And these are consistently, they, they, they are what's called the long tail applications. And there are many of them that exist, three tens of thousands. The, that means we need designers actually to be able to do that. So, and this means that we need to, our goal for that is to multiply by a thousand X around the world. So in order to do that, we have to simplify the process of creating chips and make it available to everyone. And that is, you can think about it as YouTube for chips, the world before YouTube and after YouTube is completely different in terms of ability to share content and actually get feedback and from a community. So how do we simplify this? Start with, think about the, uh, what happened in the app stores, whether it's the Apple or the Android or the Play Store from Google. What it did is that before the soft, before uh, these marketplaces exist, uh, the software developers would need to establish a company, establish a whole structure and a business development to find their own customers. And however, with the app stores, what happened is it was the process was simplified and actually led to an explosion of um, uh, potential de developers in this case, since uh, because because of the uh, the infrastructure that was shared with them. They, if you think about that, to be done in the uh, chip design. Uh, except it's a little bit more complicated. We we need to provide everything that's needed for a designer. That's equivalent with so-called the, um, um, the the SDK, but it would be uh, more, uh, more a composite of the tools and the PDKs and a business process as well as to connect to customers. If you do the same, you're potentially going to be doing that, and then we'll show how we can do that uh, as we go forward. It's a little complicated in the IC world because you have so many. Uh, aspects that at least you have to meet uh, or include to be able to do something useful in the market. And I say here in the market, but it could, but, but it means it could, it, it, it's a broad brush, but it goes into education, research, um, as well as uh, maker markets. So the there are in the there there exists some partial solutions, and some of us know about it but they don't address the whole picture. And still there are shackles around them that don't allow the ideas to, to flourish and become actual products. We do need to fix it and address it in a holistic way. And I'm not gonna read the fine print on this slide here, but it is actually, it implies that when you read it, you'll know every one of them uh, of these six items uh, would need a special tweak or a special restructuring to make it happen in a, in a good way. So how do, number one, the fit for in the simplification, solve the PDK problem. So the PDK, one of the, if the, again, the structure of the PDK or the business or, uh, process around the PDK delivery, it's confidential, requires license agreements, and no two people can actually collaborate on the same PDK, even if they both have uh, uh, the same uh, the confidentiality agreements with the supplier of the PDK. So what happened is, uh, through our projects and uh, activities with Google and Skywater, the, the Sky 130 process, which is a, uh, a process that was originally used by Cypress Semiconductors in building the devices like the PSOC um, um, uh, device. So it's a very stable and, and rich process with components. And it's available on, on the web in, with documentation and everything with the libraries, IOs and standard cell libraries, et cetera, on the web. The technology information in this case are, is, is available in a virtually limitless process. You know, it can go to anybody. It has been downloaded significantly through the, um, uh, uh, the last uh, two years. It allows massive collaboration because there's no limits of how do I collaborate with someone else. Now, uh, people ask 130 nanometer, that's a very old process, 20 years old process. I bring this slide just to say uh, and mark here that uh, a Pentium processor 
a Xeon processor that was um, done at a high speed, digit custom processor, obviously, but it was done in 180 nanometer. So the, it's an argument to stand against the, uh, the, 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 the argument of saying that the process is old. It is actually, the design can actually squeeze a lot. It depends on the, how, you know, how much uh, or what are the PPAs required for that. Also in a recent presentation, actually this is from your practice um, a couple of days ago, the, the, we, they were sharing with us that the, 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 the pie or the division of process technologies that are available are in their portfolio or the customer they use. If you think about it, look at it in this slide, about 50% is above 90 nanometer. So it is there and it exists and people are using them and not only just for 130, there's 180 and, and 250, et cetera, all for good reasons. So if you wanna actually see some of the things um, that have been designed, you can go to efabris.com slash projects. You can see that and see what people have done already over the last couple of years. The, the, pro, the PDK when it was released, just to give you an idea what happened, it was, went viral in the definition of viral so in this picture, we're showing projects that have uh, been in the works for multiple years. And then in the orange side on the right-hand side here, this is the, down, the, the, the star rating or the star booking uh, of the, um, the PDK on GitHub. And then also, the, it, if you look at the download structure here, this is downloaded in two weeks, um, 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 1,400 times. So uh, the, with a unique cloner scored 150 times a week, uh, in, 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 this is something that never happens in a foundry. Also around the same process, because it's open source, uh, the PDK, uh, a, a live, lively community actually with, um, uh, of, uh, uh, of developers and designers uh, around the Sky 130, more than 3000 people uh, on Slack. And, it's actually open to join and just, this is a link to Zoom. So this is a one way to simplify. Second, the second part, you need to address the second bullet or the second input to the end gate is the, the design automation aspect. So one of the components that we work with with the Google team is that they are coming from a software background saying, I am not, uh, I don't have knowledge of the physical design. I cannot address everything. So I'd like it to work like a compiler, even if you sacrifice the speed or the area. So it's something that counter uh, to what we, the semiconductor traditional um, uh, design, I call it the traditional approach for the, for the PPAs, think about it. So by, by doing that and actually make it to, to reach a GDS that is working, even if it's slow or bigger in area, suboptimal in area, for example, you actually open the door for thousands and thousands of people that can actually do it. You can open the door to the software developers or the FPGA designers to actually get to the GDS. So it explodes. And this is another way to get to the 1000X. Um, the, the, the tool suite includes digital and analog and an array of uh, um, highly supported uh, uh, um, engines from passionate designers or passionate developers, as well as um, formal projects that are in the works like Open Road or Silicon Compiler or Open Lane. So there's also the analog side of this. It's actually uh, developed and supported around uh, the Skywater PDK today. And you can, uh, you can see it packed with examples. So it's actually even better than some of the uh, the deliverables that come with the, 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 in the standard EDA environments. I have a lot of examples and you'll be able to see it once you go check it out. The, 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 the fact that it's open source, it's not against the proprietary environment. It's a, it, has, it does certain things that you cannot easily or practically achieve with a proprietary environment. You, can, you have a limited, limitless availability. You can give this software, the open source software, to hundreds of thousands of people. This is impractical to happen with other uh, uh, commercial environment because it's impractical. It just takes too, too much support and money. And with the open source environment, it is available. It's, you can actually share it and actually have the support come from the community. So it is, it's, um, it self propels itself. And it allows people to, if they have an idea, they can try it without anybody asking them or questioning them where 
uh, why their project or idea matters, they can just try it and start evolving it until they, they get to a point where it's mature enough. And of course, the collaboration uh, across the board, like you will see in the Slack community, people sharing the layout pictures and questions about how do I design this? How do I, in an open way, unprecedented, never happened in this industry. And I think this is just the start. Another way to simplify is that we're used to starting every time when we talk about chips or custom chips, we talk about the entire chip. Start from scratch, all the time, start from scratch. However, there are so many common um, pieces of the chip that exist. I call them, some of them are housekeeping, or some of them are uh, like uh, power management or control. Um, they, so what if you start from an existing chip, this is one of the things we did. We built a chip that has um, um, uh, a microcontroller, 32-bit RISC V microcontroller, and a few peripherals, as well as an area that the user can actually design uh, their, their idea or their project, and then we merge them together. So in a sense, the simplification of the process is to have the designer focus on the box inside without having to, to think about the rest of the chip. Gives you two benefits, cycle time, because you don't start from scratch. So you can actually squeeze it. In, you know, it gives you time to market a your startup. It gives you the ability to squeeze it in a course circ um, time span if you're in a class. So, and then uh, after all, you get a board. By getting the board, that actually allows you to plug it in and wake it up. Again, because of the standardization, we know what the board looks like. So we have it and ready. And then you'll be able to, you get this board uh, and you plug it in in the USB and start looking and programming your own design uh, software around the design. So this is a picture just showing the architecture and what's in on that chip. We call it Caravel. It's also available. It's an open source chip in, in, in all of it. And it's a, it's a well-structured with the right views and files that can be used by the open source design environments or uh, proprietary design environments. So, and then after that, I mentioned you get the board. This is an actual picture of the board where we get it. We're just hooked up to the flash. We're debugging it and waking up during the bring up process. You get, in this case, uh, we our agreement or our program with Google, you get the uh, uh, CSP packaged um, uh, uh, parts as well as the board. So the process overall looks like this. You get the tools, you get the base chip, you add your design, we merge it, and the merger process is straightforward. You upload it on our website, and then we take care of the rest as long as the design is, is clean. You can uh, use these links to actually start your analog or digital design. The fourth part is that is to start some working with the IP uh, clearing, first of all, a library of IP that uh, people would reuse. And it's against all the construction or constructs of, or the barriers of saying reuse is not possible. Well, it is possible if the, the, you generalize it and standardize it enough to be highly um, um, uh, or, if, or, or smoothly integratable. And so it requires a lot of guard railing, but having a library and making it like a Lego. So if you're if you have digital uh, analog or mixed signal IP or any type of IP that are bus compatible, you can just place them on the bus. The, the same we did with the old way where we buy a computer card and put it on the bus on a motherboard of a computer. So if we take that approach, we simplify a lot more. Now, it could restrict you from doing some very custom uh, application, but it will do a hell of a lot more than uh, uh, not having the, uh, the IP reused at all. So, and some examples of these IP or projects are available, again, in the in open source domain. Uh, if you go to our website, as I mentioned, efebs.com slash projects, you'll find great examples of these projects. And you can just look from the title here, there's uh, some of them are, you know, analog or digital or FPGA, um, and you will know more as you go um, check it out. We uh, drove a roadmap around this. We did not let it just go. So there is a way to hone in and kind of galvanize the community to drive, uh, to, to evolve the ecosystem. And because it's a new ecosystem that's just jump started, it, it takes time to get it there. 
So, but we've made progress the, the same way that, you know, uh, as we expected. Now, there's a little point here in the, in the bottom of the right of the chip of the slide that says there is a second foundry. Indeed, because of the results of, the, of this project, uh, the, we were able to influence another foundry to convince them that this is good for, for business and good for innovation. So more, more people using the, the PDK, it's more likely that they had a, a product with a, a volume. So now on the simplification, the other part of the simplification is that we're going back, that we didn't hit the cost. Now, if you want to try something, a prototype, it's still not cheap. You know, you want to do that. So the Google project specifically, we had an experiment, basically they're running an experiment that is so far running for the last year and a half, and they're committed to do, continue to do it. And we can talk about why um, in, later, maybe in the questions. But the, per, the idea here is that Google funded free silicon available for the world. Uh, there is no sign up criteria except that your design needs to be clean on the deadline. Uh, any, any skill level or experience is welcome. Uh, the Google runs four shuttles a year. Everyone is four. We manage the whole process on top of the, the Caravelle and the, the tools, etc. You get 10 millimeters squares. And uh, it is also important to say that you're getting a, a house with electricity and plumbing, and then you're moving in with your appliances. So you're not getting uh, a 10 millimeters. Really, so we don't. It is not an apples to apples to compare it to the standard ten millimeter um, uh, area that is provided anywhere else. Um, Google's condition for this: the designs may need to be open source, and the objective here is to uh, jumpstart the ecosystem in open source design. And one more condition is that if the design, the designs need to be reproducible by others. So if the designs are just a bunch of GDSs, nobody, nobody can actually inspect them or look at them or verify their validity, it, 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 it increases the risk and reduces the value. So part of this process is that we're heavily um, checking and putting the right automated checks to confirm or to that the content of the design delivered on the shuttle is actually useful for others. We need to improve on that because we're learning on some things go through the cracks, but it's actually getting to a direction where we're improving the, the level of uh, completeness of the what's being delivered on these shelves. Examples, just I'm going to pick the first one. We actually have five of these already run, but this is the first one. It was a surprise because the first one was also was uh, booked very quickly. In 30 days, we got overbooked, and the designs were very interesting from all around the world. And, uh, and you can actually see it on that link that I have down here. And then the other side is that the contributions for this design, this shuttle, for this uh, round, it was uh, from starting from a, a freshman in college on one side. On, on the other side, there are companies like IBM, Western Digital, and um, uh, QuickLogic putting resources to actually do something on this shelf. So the, uh, the one big observation around the, the first shuttle is that 60% of the, 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 the content on this shuttle was done by or the, 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 the teams that are working on it were, have never done a ship before. So they were coming from uh, backgrounds of either uh, hardware development, FPGA, uh, or some of them, or one from IBM is actually a software developer that actually dive, dove into it and started developing um, uh, their own potential Linux uh, capable processor on, on one of these projects. It's called MicroWatt. So that means that the simplification worked worked in a way that people found it easy, who were, did, did not, were not in that area, were able to get in and actually try something and go with. There's another one. Again, there are different uh, types of designs. And the rest of the designs, you can actually go to our website and check them out. And these are just beautiful pictures, because when you see it, you see the different designs coming from different people. You can see the RF. Somebody's building an, a, a, an inductor library right here. Uh, the come as I mentioned, it's coming from all over the, uh, the, the, the whether it's professional companies or universities. Sir. The here's the general statistics. So as I said, we ran uh, five of these so far, and the numbers uh, over 40 basically. For and then recently in the 2022, 
the numbers started to go much higher and we're getting uh, 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 the, the, the potential of actually that Google would actually support more. Uh, the, right now, the Google actually, the choice uh, process is based on lottery. So there's no intervention by judging the designs. And that's, a, that's the way Google wants it. So now the community in action, I'm just gonna share really quickly some of the things. So this is where actually we did a, a, an SRAM test chip. And this is a community member, we shipped them the chip. They created a complete rig for it to characterize RAM at speed. And he, they, they used the temperature controlled system to do it and provided the data and put the data on Twitter. So this is something never happened. This is an, uh, a bug converter that was developed by a, a Stanford student in their course. And he uh, developed the board himself, actually didn't use the, the existing board and tested it and shared the results and more tab tabulated results for that. This person, uh, Matt Venn, has never designed uh, a chip before. And he started now to, uh, to, uh, to, to actually his, to, to, to teach people how to do simple designs. He created his own clock uh, based on the chip that he did. And that was a, for him something new uh, and he shared it. We uh, went to the Stanford University, used the, some of these, uh, our projects or, or that, that, the, the, the infrastructure to for inside a course. And we went to have a bring up day, like a, a, call it a, it's not a hackathon, but it's a bring up day where we had all the projects and we got them up. Um, the other institutions like here, NIST Institute, NIST in the US started to contribute also by characterizing data. And there's something people are celebrating. Here's the, 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 the point here is one of the, the, the Matt Venn, who is the, that person in the picture, he um, um, started creating um, 16 slots within a, a box um, to actually uh, get more people, the small designs uh, together in one, one slot. And I will cover the, the, the Chip Ignite aspect as we go, but, and some people do some funny thing. So now after all that with the, you see the simplification process, but there are conditions and, and, and boundary conditions around it. So we, people ask us, how do I, if I don't want to open source my design, if I want to guarantee that I am uh, on the design, on the design run, I don't, I don't want to sub, be subject to a lottery. And also I want to go with my own spec uh, schedule. So we introduced the offering chip ignite, which provides you the same capabilities, but with your control in terms of time and open or not, uh, as well as the guaranteeing that you're on, on the uh, chip. But again, you gain all the aspects of the cycle time. They start not from scratch and you, uh, you choose your own license, whether it's open or not. And, um, and you get uh, boards to plus parts. So we did uh, in that offering, we did uh, introduce uh, um, several levels including the low volume uh, uh, for, for startups that actually can use the Chip Ignite platform as it is uh, with the Caravel as a, um, an initial uh, content and they add their own piece. So some of them actually take the, the chip as it is and then they add their own IP and then they have a minimum viable product. It could be a proof of concept or just in general, a minimum viable product. Before we even announce it, we have customers from different places, and I'll just go deeper in later. But one of them is the, the IEEE Solid State Circuit Society. They ran, started running a comp, an open competition, started last year. And they, uh, they, in this competition, they uh, had 10 projects from Chip Ignite, and they uh, received proposals, and they round, you know, down selected all the way. And then the work of these projects, uh, these uh, develop designers has been published in our magazine articles. So that was actually a decision to make the work visible from the contributors of these um, uh, designers that are, uh, were participating in the competition. And also it's actually a commitment because they wanna act from, they happen, the Solid State Circus Society is a very so, strong support Supporting, uh, uh, supportive of the the um, 
uh, though the open source design and the aspect of open source design because they want to increase the the number of designs around the world in 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 the ic space this is actually i, I added this right away the, just the la last uh, two hours is actually the, the the competition this year just they down selected into 22 and i just want you to look at the left side and see that the the, 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 the titles of these projects the committee is a is a industry and uh, uh, and uh, uh, university uh, uh, judges that down selected in, uh, into this list, and they will be manufactured and the I sponsored by the IEEE on Chip Ignite. So also on Chip Ignite, the startups, as I mentioned, they benefited from the low cost of development. They be able to ten thousand dollars, you get in and try something, and and you can accelerate the design because you're starting from a platform or not from scratch. And the most important part here is that you don't, you don't need to know everything about everything related to chip design. You, you take the part that is delivered to you in the reference platform as a platform that has a data sheet and you work with it. And then you add the, air, the part that you are use that you're actually contributing to differentiation and it's the, uh, would be your own IP. And uh, you can get a proof of concept. You can go uh, raise money with it. And that means that you actually, instead of going with slides, you can go with uh, a board and you can actually uh, show something and you can improve it later or increase the features after there is money. The most important pull that we've seen so far from Chip Ignite was for education. And because we are, you can actually use a Chip Ignite platform to uh, access or to, to be made it, make it available to thousands of students anywhere at any stage of education um, um, and uh, to provide learning experience, uh, experiential learning, basically. The way we look at the, the education at scale, we don't look at the universities, we look at the, the, the entire stack and engage early because, um, you know, in the, early in the high schools or earlier with simpler content, but you start there with hundreds of thousands of students, maybe, and then you, uh, as they go to undergraduate, they would they would get educated as well. They or and, uh, and it follows into the graduate school as well. So when when you look at it, it's a pyramid that goes up. And as we uh, you you go from the bottom to the top, you're increasing the number of uh, of potential designers uh, through uh, the simplicity and the uh, the the open source accessibility. Uh, as we work in an uh, with the universities, we've started shaping up the, and this has actually been trust, tr tried in you know, Stanford University. This, this year is the second year in a row. Um, the course is being taught in the spring, the fab in the summer, and then you get boards uh, in the fall. And if you think the fall is a, uh, me that means that actually they're not actually in the last year, they could be in the undergrads, an earlier year in the undergrads. So we, we started, shaping up that schedule for replication for multiple universities. And then obviously for an university can be used within the courses, undergrad and grad. It can use for capstone projects and the research. And it's a very um, effective way to prove new architectures and do iterations in a, in a very low cost. The more, the very nice thing about this, if you think about universities is the collaboration. There is no NDA, I can actually give it to uh, the undergraduate teams or uh, students where there could be thousands without having to keep signing NDAs and make them work together and collaborate freely as well as the rapid design. And there are so many benefits around it, which they cannot, they cannot be practically achieved with uh, 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 closed source PDKs or so. And also, as I, this, uh, as I mentioned here, uh, we've seen examples of uh, professors uh, divide up the design this is a, an example of a Cornell University. They have a course add-on that actually used one of the slots and they divided the team into groups and these groups will, will share a slot in the, in the, in the, in the uh, uh, on, on Chip Ignite. And this basically ends my, my coverage of what Chip Ignite is and gives you a little bit of background of how we came all the way to this, uh, where we are right now. And we're working with universities, working with governments, 
and working with startups uh, in uh, to 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 increase the penetration and help uh, uh, change the the, the 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 experience of semiconductor design and, and learning uh, at scale. And here are some of the links that are very useful to start and um, get going. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mohamed. Okay, so we got a lot of questions posted. Um, maybe I think this time we'll kind of go through uh, trying to address some of these live uh, for what we haven't been able to cover so far. Um, and if you do still have a question based on a response we've provided, please feel free to put, repost it and uh, we'll try to address address what we can here uh, during during the webinar. Of course, we will also follow up with you on any um, on any of the questions that we're not able to cover. So um, let me just read through to the top here. So there's a question about open source emulators being available. Is that something you're familiar with, Mohan? So it's not, it, it, it is not, I wouldn't say that it's available uh, like handy, but it's not, there's no reason for, for for it to start, it's not ready to be available to be available for use. But uh, I expect the the entire system for design, including emulators, will actually evolve uh, over time. Okay. Um, sec next question. Uh, there's a question about availability of CERTES, Ethernet, PCIe, DDR. So, so Caravel today doesn't have the the these types of um, interfaces, and they, although, uh, because that's, we started with what we can do in a certain amount of time. And now the community is actually working on developing uh, pieces of uh, the, the, the high-speed IO. There is also a project for a DDR, but it's uh, still in the infancy. So it, um, it is coming because people are starting to see the, the value and actually they can do things. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, hi, please. So open source design help different though. Oh, so there's a question around just how open source design will benefit. Well, I guess will help benefit the network or uh, I, I guess the, the importance or the value of open source design. Maybe, maybe it'd be worth a few comments. So the open source design, because it's open source, it allows, and actually if, you, if the networking means networking, human networking, the I, I I talk to the every member that gets to join. I say once you join the Slack channel, you'll be sitting and talking to uh, uh, the top de designers that are actually committed to doing work uh, passionately in their spare time, and uh, some of them from companies. So they ends up being they end up being connected to uh, potential uh, hiring uh, for a job or. So you, you never know because, but because the community is wide open and comes from all over the place. We actually hired people that we met on Slack because the, their experience uh, was very con, uh, compelling. Yeah, and then, you know, I think just to kind of comment and maybe re-comment or, or extend on what mom had already covered, right? Obviously, because the, um, you know, the underlying technology all the way down to the foundry is, is open source. It allows for free exchange, free communication, right? You can, you can freely get onto a Slack channel and, 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 um, and relay technical information, technical questions without having to be concerned around NDAs um, or confidentiality agreements, you know, associated with any of that information. You're, um, and, you know, all the way down to sharing GDS, right? The, the fun underlying GDS and final layouts that are used for fabrication. So that's not something that historically has ever been possible before um, yep. in, in, the, in the industry. Um, in terms of networking, like network, Ethernet networking or other types of networking, then I, there are, a, you know, a number of design efforts on multiple fronts. And uh, I think networking um, is definitely in the mix of what people are trying to build and expand and add to the repository of IP that's available to the community. There's the next right. question that said Nishit, Nishit wants to answer live. Is that, did you want to address that, right? that live? Uh, go ahead, Nishit, do you have a... Uh, so the no, it was, it was a mistake. Uh, please ignore okay. the mistake. Okay, all right. Okay. Uh, so that, so 
good. So, so to start, um, you know, for, first of all, um, you know, the links that I provided and will be provided in the slides, um, the, uh, distributed the slides, uh, will have the links to the to start. And I recommend that don't feel apprehensive about you know, uh, trying because there's no cost of trying. And the, we've seen a lot of people that actually uh, just started without any hands-on experience and ended up with their own chips. Yeah, and, and there's people, if you join the Slack community, community, you feel free to ask questions. There's people of all different levels. Everyone's, you know, there's a lot of support out there for, and, 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 and a lot of uh, folks are willing to help people who are just getting started and trying, right? So- um, in, a, in a very constructive way, there's, not, there's no such thing that is as a small or, um, yeah. or, or dumb question or anything like that. Yeah, and, and definitely those getting started videos is a great place to, to start as well. Um, so does the Skywater PDK available for RF MOS? Yes, actually, this is one of the processes that are rich in uh, RF, and they have RF models. Uh, the, and you can, there are RF designs in the community that already started, um, um, and you can, you can look at them and actually ask uh, how they did it. They're in the tools, they're the a type of analyses like harmonic balance, uh, periodic steady state, uh, or transient noise. Uh, these are things that are uh, evolving. They're uh, actually getting introduced into the tools, but the people who develop the tools are actually keen to work with the designers to improve it and actually make it available uh, with high accuracy. All right, next question is around millimeter wave frequency radio. I think you can go ahead. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think you might find some projects if you go to the our web, the website and you look for the browse projects, you actually, I think there may be. Yeah, something. go ahead. And actually, if you have any trouble, um, uh, please contact, feel free to contact me or Jeff, uh, because we, we can hook you up with the different people that are actually started something along the same track. Great. Uh, SRAM characterization. Yeah, actually, it's in the uh, we can point. Let's take an action. It's actually in one of the channels. Uh, I don't remember. Is it Open RAM or Carabel or Silicon Validation? Yep. Okay. Silicon validation yeah, we channel. will follow up. But um, also, I recommend joining the Slack community, reaching out to either of us there, and we can connect you with the right people or the right channel. Okay. I'm just gonna Great. keep the screen shared with that with that list. Um, uh, can you let me know on average, how much time does it take from an idea design? Uh, so be, we've seen everything. So I come from a hardcore design experience and I know the cycle, but we've seen people uh, come a week before the tip out to glue something up and stick it into Caraville and do something. So it depends on the design, obviously. So uh, if, it's a, if it's a simple design or a small design that you can use it and just put it inside Caravelle, it could be quick. The fabrication, so the, 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 the idea to design, that's up to you and up to your time dedication and up to, and, uh, up to depending on the type of the design and the complexity. On the fabrication, it's, uh, it's like pregnancy. You have to take nine months, not nine months. It has a certain time that you cannot reduce. So what, the time is what Jeff is ninety five days or yeah it's about it's, it's in the three to four month range by the time you some you know tape out to the time you actually get silicon back or you get parts back but um but yeah I mean when when Lama says short it's like you know so there's an example project in Caravel user project which is the kind of the starting point it's just a simple counter timer you could easily pull that modify that timer and have a chip ready to go to be fabbed in like you know the time we're talking. Uh, like 50, you know, okay. probably 20, 30 minutes easy. For a small design, yes. For a yep. small design, right? So yep. just to show you how short short can be, right? But um, obviously if you're starting from scratch with a new design, then, then it's just a matter of the time it takes you to implement that, you know, that logic or that. that yeah, and like, for example, the IEEE ones, they take about three to four months to design. And yep. so, okay. And the next one is about what, how many gates? So I'll tell you, I can get you that answer, but I'll tell you the, uh, on the picture that I'm sharing on the screen here, the, the area here is about 20,000 gates. So in the box, the right here, it's about 20,000 gates. 
So you can extrapolate. I can give you more. I can get you the, the, the density exactly. And the density here is function of the process and the library pitch, as well as the design tools capability to pack for the packing density. So uh, let's, uh, but just, I, just to give you an idea again. Yeah. Which, which project are you referring to there? Th oh, this? No. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I'm referring to the, 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 the VIX core, VIX risk five core. That oh, yeah, here. yeah. I mean, just trying to think of like what microwatt was, but microwatt's a good, that was a pretty dense. Uh, so if there's a, yeah. there's a project out there that's. So that, we, we can, we can get you the, the whole socket, but I just, I'm telling you, just take that as a, the, that box here is uh, at 20,000 gates. Yeah. How do we access FPGO boards, implement any idea? So. We're actually working on, um, and, and I happen to be working with the Google's uh, Summer Code pro, uh, uh, Initiative with um, a, a student who's, act, or who's actually working on um, uh, using an FPGA to, to uh, implement Caravel and also add an, uh, an IP to it. Now, the boards, they are standard boards, is the question about buying the hardware. How do you get the hardware? Or the question is, which board do we recommend? I don't know, but it, but it is it is possible, and we're trying to make it on a small enough board that is cheap enough that is can be available worldwide for the FPGA. That 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 that, that, that is okay. The Sky One FPK also have RF models. Yes, it does, and I want to design um, a receiver with an LNA mixer and us. Yes, you can. Um, the, at the some, some frequency say 20, 28 gig, gigahertz. I actually need to, uh, I, the, here's what I recommend. Go get in, get the RF model, put a small test circuit to prove your, you know, where you can get or not. The 130 nanometer process is not a, you know, a limited process. Uh, so I would uh, go ahead and try, but it has RF models that you can actually use to uh, quantify whether you can do it or not. Is it possible that I can get, there, were, there was a part of the question, is it possible that I can get uh, something else? I don't know. All right. Uh, is it possible that I can get, uh, uh, can I get the flow to integrate these things on the tip out guy? Yes, the flow it exists. It's, it's the same process. There's an analog environment that you can click start your analog. There is a version of Caravel, it's called Caravan, that has an analog uh, feed through pads that you can use for high frequency without the ESD loading. Yeah. Yep. I have no electronics background. I'm purely computer science background. I'm interested in chip designing. How can I begin? From the same links, uh, go ahead, and also um, you'll find a lot of fellow travelers. Um, yeah. uh, the, for example, the, the, the Cornell team, their computer engineering, uh, come from computer engineering. And uh, there's a fellow from IBM who's a, his life is completely computer science. And uh, so um, the, go ahead and take a look at the links. And then um, uh, if you find any, if don't stop until unless you talk to us, because I don't think you're, you'll stop because other people uh, have similar backgrounds and they do it. Start with something small and then go, uh, go, go further. How can I create an innovative, uh, or how, how can new innovation create in chip silicon to advance the scope utility formation opportunities on a large platform? I don't understand the question. I'm not sure I fully understand that. So you, if, you have, whoever, if you could maybe repost or clarify your question, that would be helpful. Um, who is going to fabricate the design? Fabrication is done by Skywater Foundry and based on the US. US. Yeah, it's, it's done through us, but um, the Foundry is based in the, in the US. Um, yeah. Uh, is, what is our eFabulous models? Again, I'm not quite sure I understand that question. Um, I, I don't know if that's referring to business models or if it's referring to 
design or something with respect to design? Um, yeah, if you refer, there, there is no efabless models in terms of technical models for the, there, there are, there are, there are models for open source hardware that we contributed, like some of the chips that like Raven or, or, uh, or, or Caravel or Caravan. But I, I don't know. Maybe that the answer is a business model. Maybe we can. Yeah, if it's a business, yeah. If we need, if, it, if we didn't answer, please repost um, the, the question. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put that one now. So okay, uh, slide. Go ahead. Yeah, the slide. Yeah, can the slides be uh, available? And thank you very much. It's wonderful also to be able to speak to you. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, there will be available. Slides will be available as well as the video. Okay. Any OS tool for simulation based power analysis? So we have um, a, C, a tool called CVC that is open source that we use for um, uh, it, it. If we use for back annotated like uh, SDF plus um, uh, uh, gate level netlists. The specifically for power analysis, no, uh, but I you can hack through some of these things. Uh, I because I, my experience, I can. Uh, one thing I will say is that it will exist because the community, several members of the community, key members of the community, are asking for this, including other things like IR drop analysis that are not necessarily just in the digital simulation. Okay. Uh, so then there's a question about, I guess, for research scholars, what's the scope and, and chip ignite? So if I understand the question, the chip ignite does support, I mean, it is intended to support research. Uh, and we actually have some research, you know, it is, it, we have pro programs that have university programs, you know, for research that have exercising or, you know, are, are using uh, chip ignite uh for different you know for different uh things that they're doing so we i guess if you'd like to just reach out to us directly you can you can reach out to us at um my email address so my name my email address is jeffdi at efabulous.com or or contact at efabulous.com or help or help take it or even connect to us on slack um we can you know maybe further answer whatever questions you might have or what or projects you're, con you're considering uh, we can we can help you in terms of what resources you might need. Uh, second question is on the differences between MPW and Chip Ignite programs. So I think Mohammed may have covered some of that. Basically, that they're fundamentally the same uh, technical, you know, from a technical flow perspective, they're the same solution, same details. The only difference is you, uh, that in the Chip Ignite program, you're guaranteed a spot because it's, it's a paid for program. Um, and you're guaranteed a reservation, and you um, and you have you're also guaranteed the schedule, right? That you get you get your your chips or your parts back. You also do not have to open source your design, so you can um, keep your design closed, or you can use closed source IP in your design, and that's all possible through the Chip Ignite program. The other thing the Chip Ignite program does is supports things like bare dies. So for some people who want don't want packaged parts. And want access to bare dice that's possible through chip ignite it's not possible through the open mpw program yeah and uh, and then uh, you can start at no cost to start designing and if you want to book your slot it's about 200 bucks so it's a very low entry or barrier of entry to to just even start your design and then decide which chip ignite shuttle you want to be on all right great sign off tools sign off so tools. So there is the, the there is the physical design, physical verification aspects. There, there, there's DRC, LBS, and you know parasitic extraction. All that exists uh, uh, now on the sign off in terms of the timing, like like timing closure and uh, timing analysis. Uh, there is the we use Open Timer for uh, not Open Timer, Open STA rather. Uh, for uh, timing analysis, static timing analysis, and there is, is an extractor, OpenRCX, that has the spec generation, and that's used to actually sign off the design with spec. But also there is the CVC that we use for uh, gate level plus SDF back annotation. Um, and, and maybe I, 
I, I, you will not find things that are IR drop, uh, dynamic IR drop analysis or so. But there is a full support of the the DRC and physical design as well as the uh, design closure. There is no timing driven uh, closure, I mean, timing driven placement or, or routing, but there's analysis and then you can do an ECO to meet your spec. Uh, DFT, uh, well, I, there I, is actually. Uh, yeah, I posted this actually another question that, so we had a couple of questions around DFT and I posted an uh, example of a project that we put to, back in the PW1 using a tool called Vault um, for yeah. scan chain insertion and yeah. uh, ATP. ATPG. So there is, so there is actually uh, they exist. Uh, so Fault is 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 a tool, open source tools that's developed by uh, one of our team members plus uh, his students. Uh, it's actually there is a project in the Google Summer Code actually to uh, implement it inside the flow. So it's coming. It just wasn't integrated in the first uh, in the first round of Open Lane, but it is coming, and it's called Fault. And it's available on GitHub. And and I, I think I posted a link in one of the other questions if you want to look there to even directly link to it. Use open source tool called Electric. Is the Skywater can be so we actually um, I know we know Electric very well. Okay. Yeah. Um, I um, and, and it's actually a very good tool. Uh, the just the because the, the the tool we're using right now is called X Skim that the developer of the tool has been uh, incredibly involved to develop uh, the Skywater uh, libraries for that uh, tool. Uh, we don't develop it for Filler Electric. However, I think there might, you might find people in the community that have done it. Um, so you could consider if you don't, if you wanna, you know, X Skim is very flexible as well, but I, um, I would look for a Sky 130 and Electric. It might be somebody who's already done that. Alternatively, what tool sets are available to initiate environment? It's X Skim. So that's the, the analog design tool. And as I said uh, earlier, it comes with, um, it, 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 that's the name of the tool. And it comes with examples. Once you open it, you'll see simulation examples and different levels, different types of analyses. Um, and ready, ready out of the box. Okay, great. Um, innovation and in chip silicon can create its scope. No, do we? Same. It's the same. Similar question again. Yeah. Similar. I don't understand the question. If it could be rephrased. I I wonder, Mohammed, if it has to do with. Uh, innovating at 130 and advanced, then less no, oh. advanced nodes. I don't know. Well, if that is the case, let's assume that's the case. You can develop and work on uh, process technologies like one Sky 130 to do fast iterations on and fast or low cost iterations before you go uh, redesign or migrate to something uh, highly packed. Of course, it depends on the design because some designs that are, cannot be done with 130. They're very, they're very large designs. Um, that so, and and but if but in general, analog mix signal, for example, it's a very good way to to be addressed and tested on a, something like 130. All um, right. So for, fac for faculties teaching to undergrads uh, and PG students, postgrad students, is there any training courses that are to teach the students on about Chip Ignite? Uh, actually, we have the videos, but also we are in the process of formulating like a workshops to be available for that. And also um, um, we, that are available in, and content wise that can be used. It's just, we're evolving that. So I'd like yeah. to get in touch with you uh, to see if there are specific things we can help with to jumpstart that content and yeah. and make it available. Yeah. yeah, we definitely had requests from other um, instructors for, you know, material to help, um, and, you know, to, as part of developing a course or including uh, this as part of a course. So um, 
yeah, we definitely like to talk to you about that. Um, Next question, how do you learn design and open source uh, tools like X scheme? There's a um, uh, uh, few videos on YouTube to, get, to just get you to navigate with it. And it's um, the rise, the, the learning time is very short. If you're using a schematic editor, it's a standard, it will feel standard schematic editor. And there's a so the very detailed manual. And also there's a whole channel about it in on the Slack channel that you can uh, uh, use to ask questions. All right, uh, memory compiler. Yes, uh, there is. There are two memory compilers that we that are available. That we one is the Open RAM, and it is uh, it is now. It's a little bit uh, um, uh, pre prime time in, in terms of uh, 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 readiness. So we typically now we, the, the developer of Open RAM delivers RAM blocks for us rather than us building our own RAM. And we're doing RAM test chips so that the, the compiler is being flushed. Even one of the test chips has uh, a few uh, banks or, or brand sizes, different RAM sizes for characterization so we can sort of calibrate the compiler. Yeah. The other compiler is a DFF RAM uh, based on a flip flop. And that's available uh, that you can use to, to build a, a flip flop based RAM that you can time close it as a, as a digital logic. And there's, uh, you know, currently one and 2K blocks macros for SRAM, the open, S open RAM compiler that are kind of released and, you know, people are using for design. Uh, there's a, uh, some additional four and 8K blocks that are under test that will be released as well uh, in the near future. And they support both single and dual port uh, versions of that. Right. Um, so on the how the kind of beginner uh, uh, work, uh, um, handle the back end complexity. So here's the thing. Uh, there is a solution for if you have your RTL done and verified that you can go straight to GDS and the back end will be fully automated. Uh, if you relax the requirements on uh, packing density as well as uh, routing constraints, etc. So you can start with relaxing the back end requirements so you can get something without knowing. And that's actually part of the discussion that we had with Google because the team at Google is coming from a software background. They don't know how to handle the back end upfront. They say that. So part of the, the, the concept is to enable them to get to back end without having to know everything in the back end. So uh, if you if you are in advance after as you get more advanced in the knowledge and experience, you uh, you will see that you know you can tweak the tools and we become more aggressive. But you can start without actually having to worry about the back end complexity. And then yes, okay. Um, so moving on, let's move on to the next one then. Uh, and Google is trying to enable software engineer to do to indulge in chip design. Uh, can you can you guide the RTL design engineers in in the given current scenario of how to move forward to pave the way in the future? Uh, can you guide? So the RTL engineers today they can, as I mentioned in the previous question, this can start with the open lane design flow uh, with the relaxed environment. And they can get to GDS, and they can actually you, you try both, uh, for example, an FPGA, and then also get it on GDS uh, form, and and then see actually once you try it once, it'll actually feel that it's easy, and then the, you, uh, as long as you start with the relaxing the requirements in the beginning, you don't squeeze everything in the area or you put a lot of routing constraints, so. Uh, you can start and actually get it to work. So again, the Google guys actually, the RTL is, they're actually be, before RTL. They don't need, they don't even know how, a lot about RTL. Just to, so if you know RTL, you, you are already on the path to get to use the existing flows. Yep. Okay. And then I think the next one we already answered is DFT again, yeah. right? That's, that's um, fault. Yeah. Yep. Fault. So we talked about earlier, uh, is it possible to fabricate a Python-based machine learning algorithm into a chip? Yes. So 
If you mean a Python-based uh, algorithm in a machine, in a, in a chip that runs, for example, MicroPython. So we actually, have, one of the designs of Caravel, we, uh, we st stuffed it with memory. And I think it's one of these, I think there's one on the top left here uh, to allow um, to, to be able to run something like MicroPython. So. Okay. Uh, and then buying the hardware, I mean, I think you're looking for, if you're looking for buying examples of eval hardware or test hardware, we are working on making that available. I uh, don't have it currently, but uh, that's something we should have in the near future. Uh, what tech node is the new fab on? So again, that hasn't been announced yet. Um, it's going to be a mature node similar to the 130 well, node that we have today. I will, I, I will say it's a 180. <laughs> That's that, and uh, for the time being, and the, the but it's uh, from a major foundry, which actually indicates that the, the 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 initiative is actually picking momentum because we're jumping from a, you know relatively small foundry and relatively new foundry all the way to a large foundry, being convinced about that the open sourcing the PDK is a good thing. Right, how cloud is used in chip design. So we've been using the cloud for chip design for maybe uh, seven, nine years now. <laughs> so it is basically using the, the, um, the infrastructure for cloud with that from the browser, we access from the browser, you access um, a host and you start working. It's basically remote access. And, and uh, we started with making it easy directly from the browser you can actually within minutes you're in without NDA or so. Right now we're working on a, on a different strategy to make it sim simple and uh, frictionless um, uh, yeah. way to be able to get a machine and work on it. And we have an example of that today and you can find you know, oh. information about that also in the Slack community as well as our website, but there are uh, containers that are built as an example, Docker containers, if you're able to uh, leverage or deploy Docker. Uh, onto a machine, you can basically stand up a, a, a desktop that will expose a web-based um, uh, uh, um, interface that you can, you can basically connect to over the web. So you can basically host that Docker container anywhere in the cloud environment and basically access that environment or that desktop from a local machine on a, on a browser. So you can find more information about that. There is a pro project we have posted on the Refabless organization and GitHub that um, uh, that provides an example of how to do that. All right. Um, how different is the design from the browser through installing the local tools? The difference is, is the, you don't have to install the tools. <laughs> so, so, so that's the difference, but you can use a Docker container, which is, uh, another alternative, uh, for example, sometimes the latency, uh, depending on where you are in the world, or sometimes the internet providers, they have high latency, so it becomes the browser becomes a little bit uh, slow to respond. So using a Docker container as a replacement, but in general for the open source tools, you uh, should be this, the same. Yep. Uh, okay, uh, frequency for uh, RISC five CPU in Caravel. I believe we uh, timing closure was done at forty megahertz. Yeah, it's a very conservative. That's forty megahertz. Um, we've done more aggressive uh, or higher frequency uh, with uh, with even uh, nodes like one eighty, but yep. this one. It, for multiple reasons, because we added margin, we didn't have um, enough information about the timing, et cetera. So that was, that was it. All right, uh, or where can I find RF design examples? I would again point, I think you had a link to all, to this, all the designs posted. Yeah, website. if you go to uh, efabless.com slash projects and search for uh, RF uh, or uh, uh, satellite, or LNA, just think, just look for the the uh, the terms. You'll find them. Okay. Um, do we have reference design for analog IC chip? Uh, references. So actually, um, there is a current. Oh, if you're referring oh, to, 
they're asking for, I'm sorry, our video. Yeah. Oh, we're video. On our, yeah. So, um, Not yet. <laughs> I'm actually, we're, we're actually, uh, one of the things we're going to do is that we launch a, a webinar, monthly webinar. Yep. So I am arranging uh, um, uh, examples where the designers that did something would actually present how they did it. In fact, the next uh, webinar that we post, you'll see, we'll cover that topic. That's our, we're working on it now. Okay, and then uh, the earlier question was about the business model. So business model for eFabulous is enabling people to design a broad, lot, broader community to design. And we basically, our business model is based on people, helping people do that. So um, part of that includes things like fabrication, like the Chip Ignite, there's a, there's a fee for fabrication of 97.50. And we have, um, you know, part of that is we do capture some value in that or margin in that um, in that that part of it, and also we're going to be building more ecosystem and more capabilities through things like access to I you know IP to allow, enabling people to kind of um, provide IP to the community and market IP to the community, uh, market services, market you know education uh, support. So there's a number of other areas where we're going to be um, building or extending you know what's available to for people to to um, purchase for you or, uh, and, and we'll be capturing, capturing value through that. We're also, you know, enabling people to go to commercial applications. So the whole point of this is to have a, you know, a, a design capability that, you know, uh, encompasses a large community and it also provides a path for people to build, uh, chips for, for commercial applications. And we provide a, uh, a path to do that, that doesn't require, um, them to have a significant upfront volume or, or, or capital to, in order to make that happen. Um, so, so that's, that's also part of what we're, what we're doing and how we're, and how we're capturing value in our business model. Okay. Um, next one. Will I be able to refer to the links later in the time? Uh, yeah, so the links that so that Mo, the and the links that are in the deck that Mohammed presented will are live, be, are live, and we'll we'll be we'll be distributing that. Yeah, so you can just once you get it, you can just click on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is Open Galaxy? <laughs> uh, so Open Galaxy is a name uh, that we had for the on cloud through browser design. Uh, once design submitted to the foundry, how much time does it take? It's about three to four months. So it takes about three or four months by the time we tape out to the time you get parts back. Uh, it kind of depends on the shuttle on how we're packaging the parts. Uh, and then another question around Open Galaxy, which we just answered. Uh, if I'm designing an op amp, how come, how, how can I be using a particular application in the, in the IP? How come? that can be used in a chip for a particular application in the IP. So, so we have, um, so once you have that, oh, like, um, let me say, let me bring just uh, an example here, maybe. So for example, oh. if I, yeah, okay. Let me, if I zoom in here, actually you'll, you'll see the op amps, are, these are six or seven op amps that are actually, uh, the designer put them there for testing, uh, but, we have examples where it's used in a buffer in an ADC or a band gap or an LDO. Uh, so you can, there is a chip called Caravan, which actually has the top row of this chip of the, Cara, the is analog. And you can use it within, you can integrate it inside the macro similar to what you see, like for example, here in this box here, you integrate it with other blocks. Yeah, and then so the, those those many of those projects are open source. You can obviously get pull the design. Actually, um, actually, everything you're seeing here is open source. And all that's open source, so you can you can pull that and integrate that into your own design. We are going to be working on on ways to facilitate people publishing their designs and making them more reusable. Um, also, get, providing a way for people who want to market their their designs um, for cost or for a fee that they that they'll have a facility to do that as well. Yeah. Right. Um, I I feel very. I, 
I am feeling yeah, so, so oh, yeah, <laughs> so please use the container. Yeah, I'll try uh, to, yeah. yeah, I'll um, because I, I actually it is actually um, if you it takes a, a little bit of a reading to to do with the installations. That's why we're uh, putting the container, and actually we need to let's actually we didn't publish that container in in the slides, so I'd like to add it. It's a container, Docker container that you can run it. And then soon um, we will have, you know, the ability to, to run it in the cloud uh, in an easy way. Okay, and there's so, a, uh, I think a question. By the way, if you, if you have any issues, please feel free to actually get, hit me on Slack, okay? Uh, uh, and then I'll, I'll point you the right direction. On okay. And then there's a question about just the doc with all the pointers to the free tools for the flow. So that I think that's in your deck, but we'll make sure that the links are provided and distributed yep. to the community. Um, your email address, Mohammed. So we'll provide contact. Uh, contact so, for both of us. So yeah, so so it's mkk. mkk yeah, and mine's just and then, and then you can. But it's the easiest way is to actually get in my Slack and find us there. Yep. Okay. Well, I'm putting my email address into the chat in case you want to reach. Mine too. <laughs> if you could. Yeah. But yeah, we'll be so, here. yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Just uh, what is the shortlisting criteria for the submissions of the? Oh, okay. There is no shortlisting uh, criteria. Criteria. Uh, there are no criteria for that. It's actually a lottery, random. And um, and the purpose for that with the that's for the Google uh, shuttle, yeah. and the agreement with Google is that here's the thing. There's actually a it's a philosophic. Forget Google. It's a philosophical philosophy. If if you screen and shortlist, that means you're judging the design to be innovative or not. But who says you are an innovator yourself? Me, like a, the judge. So there is a saying basically it says that the experienced people are shackled uh, with more information, with more uh, conditioning that they may actually prevent a new person from coming up with a new idea that is completely, they wouldn't think it would work. So the lot it's a lottery. Um, Google is saying if, so I like to put that uh, slide in here. So uh, the Google, <laughs> it's not a Google belief, it's, it's what we believe too, okay? Uh, yeah, so the, and, and currently it's purely lottery. It, there are um, definitely, you know, interests. I mean, they're definitely outside of, you know, we're not ju judging the value of a design. There's interest in getting people to post earlier than later because, um, and so that it will, will be a factor probably going forward. Um, and uh, but other than that, and then the other thing would be just you know having having a complete does like having a complete design. So making sure it's you have all the open source in the design that allows someone to be able to reuse it. Obviously, documentation is important. Things like that. Those are those are important. They're not currently factors, but um, those. But it's not to say that those won't be in the future. Um, all right. Where was the question list? I just lost it. By the way, on the 40, you can, if you design, if, if you just want to follow the track for Google, if you design and if you didn't get it, you're going to, you know, go to the next one. And also some people submit multiple designs different ways. So you get the chances, increase the chances. Oh, here it is. Open Galaxy again, I think it's on one of the slides. It is actually the, 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 the name for the web-based uh, cloud, cloud-based web accessible uh, platform okay um is really more chip ip designers needed for in the future for ai tools to automate and eat up the job market <laughs> is, at the it, job. is really more chip ip designers needed or will ai tools automate and eat at the job market? so um oh so ai will not design okay just just to be AI will not design. AI will improve design. Will you know improve the productivity of design, shorten the design time. But this design is 
is includes some decisions. You yeah. you can argue yes, there will be this quote unquote design, but um, uh, I think it's going to be a very very long way before you can actually complete well, yeah, the human from chip design. And if you look in the you know you look at under other industries in the marketplace, you see the trend. Automation simplification doesn't uh, reduce the number of designers; it expands them <laughs> because now many many more people can do it. Um, so and, you know, whether, and, that, and whether that's YouTube videos or whether that's websites or whether that's, you know, you can look at dozens of examples of this where, you know, when you, you enable, um, you simplify the, the process of creation, of creating something new, then many, many poor people do, can do it and many people will. So I'll, I'll tell you something. Uh, example is um, the logic synthesis. Um, before logic synthesis, there it's technically it's an automation it is an automation the, the we wouldn't be able to do a hundred million at, um, you know gate transistor i'm sorry uh, uh, soc if we didn't have that automation however we get a more ambitious because we have more automation look, so, at, how many, look how many apps that are available on your phone <laughs> so, <laughs> it didn't so i think i think i think I, right. yeah i think it's um it, it, even if you arrive to a point where you're um, totally the you know using the ai for certain level of design that means just i want to design more i can do more i can do a yeah. lot more more well, more useful mm -hmm. more complex more value higher value you know solutions yeah. right thank anyway. you good question yeah uh, good question simulate and verify new technology semiconductor device is it possible to open to, to, uh, to open eda tools as done I, I knew, okay, I want to simulate, verify, and use the semiconductor device, a new technology semiconductor device, is it possible to? So if you're talking about an advanced technology um, and you have access to it, you can certainly retarget open lane and if you if you yeah. want yourself and, and do that, it, it wouldn't be on the, on this shuttle, okay? Uh, open lane has been, uh, uh, tested um, on uh, 12 nanometer with global foundries, for example, but but it's not in an open. It's not available in this program. Okay. Uh, well, once design is submitted to the foundry, I think yeah, I think I answered this. This is three or four months. Um, can Open Galaxy tools be used for design for Google Skywater? Okay, so generally, I'd say no. <laughs> so we have an alternatives that we are making available, um, but and we recommend those, and we and that will include you know easy to you know, equivalent kinds of solutions as to what Open Galaxy is providing today. And then we will provide that uh, a cloud uh, based alternative uh, soon. Just stay tuned. Okay. What is a max I/O frequency, max I/O pin count, LVDS I/O available? So. So uh, I/O frequency, just uh, you know, hold 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 on to your chair. It's <laughs> six, sixty mega six zero sixty megahertz. It's low. Okay. Using That's the standard why I/O cells that. Uh, yeah, using the standard I/O cells that are provided by the foundry. Uh, the LVDS I/O um, it doesn't come with the foundry. However, there are developers in the community that have started to put together some. And then the I/O count for the chip about it's thirty-eight. Yep, thirty-eight programmable I/Os. Yeah, available to the user. Yeah, and there is uh, there are people working on a low voltage differential or differential I/O. I don't. Know yeah, that. yeah, but it's not. But it's not. You know, I don't have a timeline for it. Yeah. But it is. Uh, all right, we only got a couple more, and I think we're going to wrap it up. Uh, so, are there any discounts or concessions for universities? There, are, you know, the the price the pricing on solutions are already pretty aggressive. However, there are um, programs to sponsor um, fabrication for universities, and so I would stay tuned um, on the availability for programs like that. Um, are and including like the IEEE program that Mohammed mentioned earlier, right? That's an example. Um, the which foundry or other PDK options are available in Open Galaxy for designing. So, um, the Open Galaxy solution has historically supported a, a node for, uh, nodes from Vexfab and from um, Global Foundry. Uh, 
Uh, but it's not so included in the fabrication program. It's not part of Chip Ignite. It's not part of the fabrication program. And so if you have some questions about that, I'd suggest reaching out to us. Um, the can how we collaborate with different members of the team in the same circuit like X team or, or open. So how do you collaborate uh, using you know on, on design? Yeah. So um, it actually uh, it, we use okay. There's the we use GitHub or Git concepts for collaboration in terms of committing. You know, you finish a step and you put it in a repository, and someone else will check it out. So. That is the, the, the data management process we use. Uh, you don't, by doing that, you don't edit the same schematic, you don't, and Git system, the Git, Git uh, uh, approach will check any differences in somebody's design, two designs and tell you what the differences are. They cannot overwrite without actually an approval process where you, if you have two people played with the same design, for example, schematic, you're not gonna just overwrite it, you can't. So, there, there is a um, something that uh, we use Git, and I think we need we need to write a document to show how that is uh, done. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so yeah, that will we will follow up on that. And the last one was just upcoming upcoming schedules on hands on training and workshops. Um, I think Mohammed talked to this already, but we are working on providing uh, several of those going for in the future. Um, so I would just stay, you know, stay tuned and, you know, definitely follow up on Slack. We'll be announcing that, that definitely through Slack and through email, um, through the email distribution if you register on the Fabulous site. Um, okay, there was one more that just came in at the very end here. Our uh, designs done on XFab or GF, not part of Chip Ignite, so they are not. Um, the only, the Chip Ignite today is exclusively on the 130 open source 130 nanometer node out of Skywater today, and with an additional node to be announced here in the near future from another founder. Okay, all right. I think that's everything. Uh, thank you very much. Sunita, did you wanna uh, say anything to close? Yeah, so we can close now. I think we have had a very good uh, question answer session from, um, I can see there are more than 133 participants. So uh, I hope uh, we'll be able to come back uh, on the various uh, uh, email uh, queries also, which we may receive later on. And uh, uh, with this, uh, I think uh, uh, we have been able to give uh, an exposure and an idea to the students and the community at large from the faculty researchers also about the EFAP less opportunities that we have and through Methi also what we can offer. So along Great. with our C2S and the AI scheme, I think this will be, you know, it will be wonderful for us if we can associate with the fabulous our students and researchers can come forward and take this opportunity, grab it with both hands and uh, Methi is there to support any endeavor which we can have with eFabless uh, for, uh, for our students especially. Yeah. And, and I want to say just, uh, and, and this is kind of, um, I will make Nishit and Vivek laugh, but um, when you think about the open process here, do not think about the funding. Think about yeah. the, te the technical aspect of this, and then Vivek and Nishit is gonna take, are going to take care of it. Jeff, <laughs> uh, <laughs> just, just, just one follow-up question I have. Uh, so after the webinar, uh, I think there needs to be some sort of a follow-up with the participants in terms of what is their request, what is it that they would like to see as next steps, so that yep. we can then steer this program accordingly. So I think I think let's work work together, maybe with Nishit and, and both of you, as to what can be our next step. Maybe it is a set of questionnaire that we float to the, the participants in terms of what kind of help they would expect from Meti and from from Fabless, and based on that we can then work out a strategy on what we do in future. And that's, that's very important. So I think you have, Jeff, you have the, the, the entire list of participants. So yep. yeah, so, so we'll we, we can send a follow up out for that. Yeah, yeah great. And the shit, and the shit and uh, Vivek, I guess we'll work together on the, the type of follow up questions you want and all that. Sure. Okay. All right, very good. Well, if there's nothing else. Thank both of you. 
uh, you know, the e fabulous team for uh, bringing this together to the to our research and design community. They thank really thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. It's exciting, and and uh, we we'll look forward to it. Yeah, thank you for hosting us. It's been great. So looking forward to uh, to interacting more. With Have a wonderful okay. day. You too. Thank you, Mike. Thank Jeff, and thank uh, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a privilege. Thank you to all the participants also. Thank you.